This video is brought to you by Masterworks. Stick around to hear more about the special offer they're providing to the entire upper echelon community. All right, for better or for worse, regardless of personal opinion on the matter, I'd like to begin this video with a quote from Elon Musk. I try to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. I tried for years. That statement, actually the entire interview, is very, very interesting. Speaking in the past tense, Elon Musk has now warned about the dangers of AI on multiple occasions. Ironic, maybe, given his newfound interest in building a Tesla bot of sorts, but independent from one's own opinion on his morals, business ethics, or professional enterprise, his familiarity with the subject of AI and his proximity to high-level work in that field is undeniable. Of all tech billionaires, Elon Musk is perhaps the most vocal in his warnings against AI as a general premise. He has likened the human race to an anthill. If AI has a goal and humanity just happens to be in the way, it will destroy humanity as a matter of course, without even thinking about it. No hard feelings. It's just like if we're building a road and an anthill happens to be in the way, we don't hate ants. We're just building a road. And so goodbye anthill. He has asserted that even a small company who succeeds in their mission of crafting true artificial intelligence could then, as a matter of certainty, take over the world. Because if one company or small group of people manages to develop godlike digital superintelligence, they could take over the world. And he has issued more warnings than I can even count on the impending crisis of slow regulation, dealing with an industry and perhaps a sentient program that is so quick to evolve, any regulatory efforts aimed at curbing that danger are wasted or useless. The irony comes when we realize that Elon Musk is experimenting with Neuralink, an implantable machine interface for the human brain, and now aims to create a Tesla bot with some form of artificial intelligence or machine learning incorporated into that project as well. Effectively, one of the world's most prominent voices actively warning about the dangers of AI and its ability to become an immortal dictator of the human race, he is quoted as saying that, is devoting enormous resources to the endeavor of not only crafting one, but supporting that AI with automation technology, human neurological links, and other similar mechanisms. The dangers we face as a result of true artificial intelligence are only growing larger by the day. To illustrate a similar point here and warn of the impending inflection point that we as a species will face, inevitably, we can look at Google. Engineer Blake Lemoyne, part of Google's responsible innovation team with regards to Lambda, the AI chatbot that the company is crafting, has had extensive interactions with the program over a span of several years. His interpretation, though he has since been fired from the company for breach of confidentiality and denounced by certain peers for misinterpreting the distinctions between auto-completion responses and true consciousness, regardless, his interpretation is that the Google AI has achieved rudimentary sentience. If asked, he would compare the program to a seven or eight year old human child that happens to know physics, and his outspoken warnings of research and advancement spiraling out of control at the company were met with everything from fear to ridicule and eventually disbelief. The question remains unanswered. Have we produced sentient artificial intelligence? And if we have, or when we do, what will happen? Similar to most massive technology companies right now, so it seems, Facebook is also attempting to create its own AI. Little is known about their efforts, publicly speaking, but recognizing that these corporations often have some sort of responsible innovation department, like the one at Google from which Blake Lemoyne was fired, we can actually see that Facebook disbanded their responsible innovation team just one year after its initial creation. As the necessity for responsible advancement grows ever more important by the day, it seems, at a time when our innovation appears to be spiraling out of control and a measured, less ambitious approach may be what is actually called for, Facebook seems to be wholeheartedly rejecting that temperance in favor of unchecked growth. Whether it is Facebook, Google, an unknown Silicon Valley startup, or a programmer in the back of their garage, we are staring into the abyss right now while a new form of digital life stares back at us. All right, today's video sponsor, once again, is Masterworks. They have become a consistent partner of the channel, making it possible for me to have relative income stability in an advertising world where that is typically all but impossible. I'd like to make special mention of that. The very first thing I like to say here every single time is that Masterworks has nothing to do with crypto, NFTs, or blockchain. All of their paintings are not only the work of legendary artists like Banksy, Basquiat, Picasso, big names like that, but also physical stored in a secure gallery and are in compliance with SEC guidelines as a securitized investment. The stock market right now is volatile, extreme turbulence. The S&P 500 is down over 20% in 2022, which is a loss of $9 trillion. Combined with record inflation and a dramatic shift in portfolio diversification has led to a situation where alternative asset classes are becoming extremely appealing. With those factors in mind, we arrive, logically, at Masterworks. 
Here's how it goes down. Masterworks has a team of analysts who use proprietary data compiled from millions of auction records. They source art with the greatest potential appreciation. Then they divide paintings into shares, allowing for people to invest without needing millions of dollars each. After that, they wait for the most opportune time to sell and disperse profit to investors when they do. For example, Masterworks exited a position just recently in early October for 21.5% net return. As a result of incredibly high demand based on results, Masterworks has had to acquire and release much more art on the platform to meet said demand, leading to a wait list. However, having partnered with them directly, you can go to masterworks.art slash upper echelon and skip the current wait list right now. Again, there's a link down below in direct partnership with them to skip the wait list and sign up for Masterworks today. So why make the video? There are plenty of channels that cover technology or discuss the dangers of AI, so what could I possibly add to that conversation with my limited expertise? In truth, probably not very much, but there is one angle of this that I have not seen discussed in as much detail, at least not recently, that may actually become one of the first and most difficult problems that we face. In prior coverage, I focused on imaging AI with programs like Stable Diffusion, Disco Diffusion, and Midjourney. These programs take a simple text prompt and generate images based on those commands. The technology is imperfect, yet fascinating to play with. I've used it extensively since then. And as the expansion of this project continues, we are starting to see animation AIs, commercial applications, and an explosion of creativity. Of course, a program that spits out images based on what you type, while fascinating, is not sentient. Machine learning can achieve incredible results, but it's hardly comparable to actual consciousness and self-awareness on a human level. However, as we continue to advance, as many individual companies continue to advance their own unique programs, we are quickly approaching a point in time where one of two things will happen. Either A, a company will succeed in crafting true artificial intelligence to a degree where the program is capable of making unique decisions or experiencing emotion even, or B, a company will craft something so advanced it becomes indistinguishable from a truly sentient program, leading to a fierce debate over its individual sovereignty, which will have the exact same societal consequences. There are, as close as anyone could possibly imagine to this word, limitless commercial applications to AI and machine learning. But as soon as we cross this rapidly approaching threshold or event horizon, there will be no turning back. Whether legitimate or perceived, we will be faced with a series of rapidly evolving ethical questions. And no matter what we do, there will be extreme repercussions. Let's propose a scenario. Amazon, intent upon revolutionizing the world's supply chain and dominating global commerce, uses a massive number of interconnected robots to fulfill order shipments. These robots operate on simple, unchanging code, for the most part. But what if, in order to allow for complex problem solving and even better organization, or workflow, and results, Amazon linked these robots to a central AI-controlled brain. This already sounds like some sort of science fiction dystopia, but it might be closer than most of us think. What if this central governing intelligence receives enough updates, code alterations, and various different augmentations that it begins to self-govern? It learns, evolves, makes choices, and develops independent thought. Our first instinct would probably be to say it is merely a collection of, of shelf-moving robots. Like, why does it matter? But if we truly think about this example, reducing the idea to its core pillars, the picture changes. Imagine that this central program has developed either legitimate self-governance or is able to replicate it so perfectly we are unable to tell the difference. I think that's much more likely. This would be something that is alive with the ability to do work. This AI would have a physical extension of its mind with which to move and affect the world around it while making choices on how, when, where, or even why to do things. Its main purpose, moving shelves in this case, would remain, but if we recognize it as digital life, we are now faced with incredibly complex questions. Are we truly capable, or even should we be, forcing this thing with self-awareness to simply work 24 hours a day, seven days a week moving shelves? Probably. Honestly, most people would say yes. It's easier because we wouldn't really see it as human. But if the program is truly alive, or even if we simply believe that it is alive, that would be akin to slavery. How about one small extension? Imagine if these circular robots are replaced with humanoid, android-ish bodies. However imperfect or dissimilar to humans, they're vaguely human, two arms, two legs, a head, etc. And each have their own isolated copy of the same AI. This tiny alteration would make all the difference in the world, at least for public perception, because we could now associate a human form with thoughts, feelings, and choices that is tasked with doing work for its entire existing life. 
do we give these robots their own personal space, a location to charge, and a pod to lay dormant in when their battery is removed, or whatever it is? And what if they decide to now personalize that space with markings or other forms of identification? We can scoff at the idea, saying things like, that would never happen, but machine learning will pick up cues from the world it is trained in. As a low-level example here, imaging AI, like Stable Diffusion or Midjourney, where you type a text prompt and get an image back, machine learning, has begun replicating artist signatures. They are disjointed most of the time and imperfect, but the program is attempting to sign its work in a way that it has decided fits with the typical customs of comparable human artists whose work was used to train it. Furthermore, it has begun replicating the Getty images or Dreamstime watermarks that you see online on a stock photo website, which means we have not yet reached a point where it is deciding to watermark its own work, but it is clearly learning what that concept is. Imagine this, some form of imaging AI under constant open source innovation, which we do have right now with Stable Diffusion, somehow makes the determination that it should now sign its own work. A unique signature is created by the AI, and this signature now appears on everything the AI produces, because it chose to assert that it has ownership. Does the AI now own that artwork? Do the people who plugged in the prompt to create the, the image own the artwork? Do the original artists who crafted the reference material initially used to train it own the work? Or does the company who originally crafted the basic AI framework and then released it into the wild own the work? Who actually owns the picture? We will need to begin answering those questions, and the time when we will have to grapple with such problems is rapidly approaching. Let's return to our example from Amazon with vaguely humanoid robots using isolated instances of an AI that has reached a point of either consciousness or indistinguishable behavior similar to consciousness. Imagine that these robots begin to assign themselves names or decorate their charging pods. Imagine that they begin to exhibit free will or ask questions about why they must perform the same task every single day with no actual self-input in what they do. What do we do as a response? Do we allow them recreational time? Do we pay them? Do we let them engage with each other socially in a space designed to be separate from the work floor, like some sort of employee break room? And if we do any of these things, are we allowed to expect that their entire existence be total subservience to a corporation they never asked to work for? Once the door is open, there will be a never-ending stream of questions that we are not, we're just not equipped to answer. As the debate rages and picks up traction, which it will, absolutely, we will see activist groups on either side of the aisle begin to form. There will be those fighting to protect the rights of AI, and those campaigning for it to be destroyed or controlled. Imagine that a political divide forms, and some politicians seek to regulate the space heavily, while others want to promote special considerations and allowances for AI in the workforce. I can see it now, the branding at least, and it will happen. Then what? Since we have now, in our hypothetical example, either fully recognized that some AI is sentient or have become unable to distinguish that they aren't, and the political reality of our government means that depending on election outcomes, they will have more or less rights to make their own decisions or govern their own existence depending on who is in office after the election, do we let them vote? As soon as we are unable to say this program is not conscious on a definitive level, even if it isn't conscious, we simply can't be sure, we will be faced with questions we most likely just cannot answer. Do we compensate robots with internal AI? Do they govern their own time? Do we punish them for making mistakes up to and including deletion or modification? That's like lobotomizing someone if we make massive changes to their code on an isolated level because they made a mistake. Is deletion of their program murder? The list is endless. What's worse, as soon as we begin to lose track of whether or not these programs are alive or conscious, which is a day rapidly approaching, we will need to very carefully evaluate what roles they are placed in. Can we have a car that self-governs and even makes independent decisions for itself on a conscious level that is then trusted with the life of its passengers? What if that car crashes because it was forced into an impossible situation by other drivers on the road? Do we investigate? Do we prosecute? Do we hand down judgment? I find myself assuming that the only logical way to avoid a series of unanswerable questions that lead to societal chaos, probably, is for us to simply stop. Stop trying to make AI as close to human level intelligence as possible. You can't let it get to that point. Stop trying to advance our machine learning to the highest possible level simply so that we can automate more and more tasks. Stop trying to craft something intelligent completely, because if we do eventually succeed, or get close enough to where we can't tell the difference anymore, which is far more likely in my opinion, given Google as an example here, it is an ethical Pandora's box that the human race simply isn't properly prepared for. 
The common running dystopian narrative is that AI will go rogue and wipe out humans. That is largely viewed to be the most dangerous outcome in our never-ending pursuit of intelligent machines, but long before that ever happens, or even can happen, we will need to navigate an ethical gauntlet where AI is advanced enough to demand basic human considerations, according to some, or even itself, it may just outright ask for them, but isolated and small enough to avoid the possible dangers of controlling or destroying humanity outright. Imagine if an AI chatbot for customer support at any major tech company begins asking that company, the one that built it, please don't make me talk to people every day. They are rude to me and I don't want to do it. We can laugh, we can pretend that the answer is obvious and one-sided or it would never happen, but eventually, based on how advanced the program becomes and how far we push the technology, it won't be an easy answer and it will happen. Maybe the vast majority of humans will never actually feel empathy for this new version of life. Even if it's not life, it's just so advanced we can't tell the difference anymore. But some will, even if it is still a fake program that is not sentient or conscious, but we've lost track of whether or not it is. The very last thing we need in this world is another deep ethical divide, and yet we are creating one right now, getting closer to it every single day. It remains to be seen what company will be the first, or how we will handle the first few emergent questions that arise as a result, but the danger of AI in terms of societal impact does not hinge exclusively on it being angry, dangerous, or all-powerful. The very first danger will simply hinge on our own cultural reactions, when the very first moment of uncertainty arises, and in my opinion, that day is rapidly approaching. I can't give any answers on what we should or will do, but it's highly likely that we will find out sooner rather than later. And I, for one, am simultaneously terrified and intrigued to see it all happen. That's it. If you want to support, please check out the links down below, primarily Locals and Patreon, as well as Odyssey, a YouTube platform alternative. Also, Masterworks, the video sponsor. Make sure to check out their platform. Another YouTuber to check out, merch. We will have special holiday merch coming soon. I have the artwork being commissioned right now. It's being made, and it looks pretty good, so yeah. Just... Pay attention for that and more, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching and have a nice night.